Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to Wind Down Fridays. This is your girl, Arthur Erica. I have my favorite co-host on with me, Arthur Kim, with me today. And this is the Wind Down Fridays will give us the hug survival story edition. As you all know, the month of October is Breast Cancer and Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And every Friday of October, we're going to bring a lady on that survived domestic violence or even have a lady on to tell her story about breast cancer. So today we have our friend Mickey on with us today, and she's going to tell her story. So we're going to pass the mic over to Mickey. Hello, everyone. My name is Mickey, and my story starts about 14 years ago. I was 29 years old. I just got divorced, and I met a man who is uh, 12 years older than me. Uh, I should have seen red flags in the beginning. Um, he did not tell his life story accurately. Mm. And being uh, newly divorced and having two small kids and him showing me a different world, you get so attracted to that. So a year after being with him, I kind of knew some things were not right, but I just didn't see him in that light or not barely. Okay. So I married him. Okay. Um, only to find out I was wife number five. Oh. He had five children, one he did not have anything to do with, and the other four were by three different women. So I've started to see a pattern. Mm -hmm. Well, he moved me, he took me from my state of Tennessee and moved me here to Texas. Oh, you're in Texas, okay. Texas. So I had no family no friends and he worked a lot. So all I had was him mm -hmm. and I depended on him so badly with having no outside, I guess, freedoms. Cause mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't know Texas and I had no friends. Right. Well then his family judged me for what reasons I still don't know. Because mm -hmm. I was good to everybody. Um, his mother didn't like me. Um, when I asked him to defend me, because again, I moved here for him. Mm -hmm. right. he, he would never defend me to his family. So after two years into the marriage, um, we got into an argument and it had to do with his family. And that was the first time he threw me down. Okay. And I never in a million years thought he would do that. Right. And it was all due to his brother. So, so, go ahead. No, go ahead. Like his brother. Okay. What does brother got to do? But okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. Brother was telling basically you know, you've married her and you stopped having anything to do with your kids. His, I mean, his son was incarcerated and he didn't understand why he couldn't help him out, but yet he was married to me. And I'm like, this is none of your brother's business, what we do in our home. Right. Well, children. And that's when the altercation came in. And I was just about to start a job the next day and being in physical therapy, I did pool therapy. Mm -hmm. Well, it was hard to cover up the bruise on my arms from him throwing me down mm -hmm. and down onto the driveway because I was trying to leave. Anytime I tried to leave, he would withdraw all the money out of the bank. So every time I would say I'm going back to Tennessee, he would take the money out of the bank so I could not leave and just to tell me to come on home. So with that, I had no access to leave mm -hmm. because everything financially depended on him. Mm -hmm. 
So after that, I just lived with it. I thought it maybe it was a one-time deal. Mm-hmm. It would never happen again. But then I started to notice anytime he got angry with me, he would break things in the house. Um, his anger is so violent, the breaking of things in the house. And I would do anything to calm him down, apologize, try to make things better. Mm-hmm. The second time uh, he came at me again was due to his family. And he literally knocked me down in the bathroom because he did not like me interfering with his family. So I think that incident kind of truly did me in because his anger, it's his anger. Every time I would say anything, I'd have to walk on eggshells because never did I want to get him angry Mm -hmm. by just saying simple words. Right. So I still had no friends. Um, I didn't go out and do anything. So it was starting to build up until I did find some friends and I started, uh, one of my hobbies is dancing. Oh, okay. So I started competing in dance. Ooh, okay. And I, I think just the fact of having, uh, some camaraderie with people, some interact mm-hmm. with people you crave so bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I started dancing. I had fabulous dance partners. Um, just all around the DFW area. Mm -hmm. Well, he did not like that. He didn't see the point in competing because you don't win money. It's just, you actually pay more money to compete than anything. Mm -hmm. So I had to start backing away from that or he would start talking to my dance partners and trying to say, hey, you know, me and Mickey are having problems. You kind of need to back away uh, and stuff like that. So my dancing eventually had to stop. Or if he was at work and he was out of town, I would sneak out to dance. Mm -hmm. I felt wild. I'm like, I'm literally sneaking out my to go dancing. Well, he wanted me then to start taking part in something that he liked, which was golfing. And I'm like, okay, I've never done anything like that, but if it helps the situation, Mm -hmm. I'll try. Well, ironically, I'm good at it. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, okay, this is different. Okay. I'll try it. So, Mm -hmm. Started golfing mm-hmm. and I met a ladies league and I started going twice, twice a week and still continue to dance. Well, then he started saying, um, you're putting too many miles on your car. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't pay out, uh, between the miles, the gas, the oil changes, tires, you, you don't need to be doing it. It's costing more money than anything. So I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? I mean, I clean house all day. You could eat off my big boards and everything like that. That's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I take care of everything of his. Mm-hmm. So in order to keep peace, I backed away from golfing. I backed away from dancing. And I started kickboxing because it was here in town. Yeah. (laughs) So I'm like, there's no miles. Mm -hmm. Gas won't be an issue. But when he saw that I was starting to build strength. Oh, yeah. That became a problem. Became Mm -hmm. a problem. Mm -hmm. So my trainer ended up going to another town. So I thought I'd go to the town with him to continue training. No, 
if we were back onto gas miles the car mm -hmm. but now if i drove out to him then gas mileage and everything was not a problem mm -hmm. if i went to tennessee to visit my kids he would say you need to get to tennessee and get right back so i couldn't see my friends i couldn't um visit with any i was in tennessee i would have to go to tennessee visit my children and get right back to Texas. How long of a drive is that? Uh, it's 11 hours. Okay. So, because my, uh, where I'm from is just uh, south of Nashville. Oh, okay. So I'm having to go basically to the middle of Tennessee. After that, uh, my father passed away. Hmm. So my mother is a, a homegrown Jersey girl. So I had to fly to Jersey for my dad's funeral. And my mother is not in great shape. She's a uh, two time cancer survivor. Okay. So when my dad passed, I had to take care of her. So I had to stay up in Jersey for some time. Well, when I finally got back and brought her with me here to Texas, um, he thought, well, maybe since my mother was here, I wouldn't go dancing, mm -hmm. I wouldn't go golfing or anything like that. Well, the, my mother, she, mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. needed Well, that following year, uh, I went out dancing. It was my birthday party. So they had a huge party at the dance hall and a friend, a male friend of mine went he did not like that. He became very intoxicated. And when we were trying to get him to the car, he turned around and he punched me twice in the chest. Oh. Um. So, uh, and then my male friends took him down. Mm -hmm. They just clobbered him. Mm -hmm. Well, when the cops came, they went ahead and took him. Mm -hmm. They did not press charges on my friends. Um, so because here in the state of Texas, it's not up to the person who's being abused. It's up to the police officer yep. to press charges. charges. Mm -hmm. And so the police officer pressed domestic violence on him. Mm -hmm. He was more upset not about hitting me but the fact that he might have to be put on probation for it and how that would affect his job not the fact that he hit me so mm -hmm. okay, this is the third time you have hit me mm -hmm. he promises he'll never do it again but it's not even just so much the hitting, it's verbal. So anytime he gets into a fight with me, I am called everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing he would not say. I'm a bitch, I'm a whore, uh, and we'll even do the C word. Oh. Yes. Mm. What? Yes. And I'm like, men who love you, would never mm -hmm. use those words. So it's gotten to the point where he's now doing it in front of my friends. And now they're actually seeing the true him because I get judged constantly, constantly. Well, you should be a better wife. You should respect your marriage. Like, uh, I, I do. I'm sorry if I like to dance and mm -hmm. golf. And I do hang out with more men than women because the women judge me more mm -hmm. than anything. Yep. So I find, I guess, more acceptance with the men in my life. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't like it because they protect me. 
it's not like they're trying to get with me. It's not anything. It's just the fact that they're like, he doesn't need to do that. Mm -hmm. So within the years, I finally have had enough. This is not the way life should be. The only reason he's upset is he's 55 now and he goes, I don't want to be alone. So I'm like, I'm just property. Mm -hmm. I'm not anybody special. I'm just property. Mm -hmm. So Right now, I'm currently trying to file, but again, I'm still having to pad him because if he gets mad, he will break everything I own. Mm -hmm. And when I bring up the past of like, well, these are the things you did. If it doesn't conform to his needs, then we do not bring it up. Mm -hmm. But if it conforms to him, then he'll bring up everything I've ever done. And again, He'll tell me to get out of his house. Um, he has literally tried to change bank accounts on me, so I have no money to leave. Um, he'll try to behave, and then three months later, we're back mm -hmm. into the same boat. It's never changing. It's it's never going to change as much as I wanted it to, wanted to. Mm -hmm. it's never going to change and i have done everything i mean i cannot baby him enough i cannot show enough appreciation um and his thing is you don't show me enough love i'm like well you know how do you how do you do that mm -hmm. or if i try to talk to him in any manner He'll say, I'm treating him like a child and I should not talk to him that way. And sometimes he'll just come to my face and say, you know, the way you're talking to me, I could just slap you right now. And it's like, what? How do you say that again right. to somebody you love? That's not love. Right. So when he talks to my friends, again, he'll try to tell them, well, me, me and her, were having some marital problems. Cause so could you please back away so we can work on things? It's his way of trying to isolate me from anybody. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I can't, I can't be that person anymore. So trying to get out right now has been a very strategical mm -hmm. thing. And the mm -hmm. only, Besides him starting over, he knows he would have to pay spousal support. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason why he would not file or leave me. Or if I bring it up like, well, you do know that the judge would probably rule in my favor because you do have charges against you for mm -hmm. defense. And he will go into a rage, mm -hmm. rage. And again, then I'm going to have to start padding. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've never thought I'd be a person that would constantly tell somebody I'm sorry. How do I be better? How can right. I, how can I make this better? It's never about what he wants to make better. It's about what can I make better? Right. So with that, I never knew how I've changed myself. So I don't go out anymore. Um, and that's the one thing I loved. I loved to dance mm -hmm. and I will not do it anymore. Um, if I do go out, he wants to know when, where, why, and how, who am I with everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm starting to stand up for myself with him and try to change my life for the better. I'm like this, I can't live like this. But the rest of your life, right. I, I can't be with a man who yells at me. I can't be with the name calling, um, worried about what he's going to break in the house. 
during his rages. Um, I guess I know enough kickboxing now that if he comes near me, right, I can defend yourself. I can defend myself. Um, but then he uses that against me because mm -hmm. now he's like, well, if I'm going to go to jail, I'm going to make it worth it and try to change to, for him to be a victim. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, I have to sit there and take it. Right. Which is not, that's not right. Right. It, which is not. So that's been my life for the last 14 years. And, and you guys are still together. Yes. Okay. Okay. We're on the exiting out part. Do you guys, are you guys in a separate room or are you guys in the same room? No, uh, he, he works two weeks out and one weekend. So he's out to work right now. Oh, okay. Okay. So on those, like, have you come up with, um, an escape plan? Yes. Okay. So are, are we going to execute that escape plan? Yes. I can't live like this no more. Okay. Okay. So during That's your relations, during the relationship, during the marriage, have there been any happiness in the marriage or it all started off, you know, what this violence or rage and all? Um, there's been moments where it's been very nice, but then I've noticed it's only because I do what he wants. Mm -hmm. It's not about what I like or want to do. It's about keeping him happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's I, always I, the case too. You know, yeah. if you're not doing what they want to do, it's always some BS and it's always you're the problem when in actuality you're the problem of the situation. Mm -hmm. So during the, during the marriage, have at any point in time that you had to go to the emergency room for a lick or a hit that he may have did? No, when he punched me in the chest, it just left a huge bruise on my chest. Okay. And so your friends are now aware of what's going on and your family is aware of what's going on. So are they supportive of trying to help you get out? Um, I have a few friends that are very supportive and they're saying, you know, it's time, it's time for you to leave. But then I have many that blame me. And I'm like, uh -huh. yeah, and it's kind of, it's kind of weird. It is. So I can see the, the two sides of how people look at it. Mm -hmm. And it's not until the people that actually see the true side of the person that's being the abusive, that truly understands it. And the people that are just watching from afar. Mm -hmm. right. They're only on the outside, like. You know, that's the thing. That's that's what makes it hard for us as women that go through domestic violence. That's what makes it hard for us to talk about our mm -hmm. situations because it's so much a judgment going on. You yeah. know, people wanna people wanna judge you, but really don't know what's going on at the end of the right. day. Like just because I'm going back back to this person. That don't mean I want to be there. It's a me is a reason, either financially or emotionally, or something's there that everybody just not at the place where when you get that first lick, I'm gone. No, everybody's just not there because sometimes the first lick don't happen right away. Sometimes the first lick happened two, three years in the relationship. So it's not fair that I feel like it's not fair that people judge judge women that goes back to the abuser because you don't know what the situation may be you know just like your case he isolated you he isolated you from your family in tennessee so you have no money because he bitching and griping about you even working even dancing you know so you don't have the the financial needs to leave without his bs yeah so you know i think it is unfair and especially family and friends to judge a person. You know, I think that's very unfair. Mm -hmm. Well, they, totally 
he works so hard for you. He's given you such a great life. Why are you, I guess, misbehaving? And it's like, uh, do you live with me? Exactly. Mm -hmm. the, the daily things. And um, never did I think I was a part of domestic violence mm -hmm. because I always thought that true domestic violence is women who are severely beaten and beaten. Mm -hmm. abused. never did I think I was abused verbally or financially or even physically until recently you know I'm financially abused mm -hmm. anytime I make a, a charge if I use the bank account he's sending me a picture of it what you buy uh, you don't need to be doing that um, so it's like Okay, so I had to open up a different account and manage my own and do things mm -hmm. um, verbally. No man, like I sit there and look at my daughter who's 20 and think if a man said those things to her, mm -hmm. just pulverize them. But yet I can't do that for myself. Mm hmm. So it's like, and then whenever I do start becoming happy and doing things, then he'll call those people and tell them, you know, me and Mickey are having some issues right now. I need you to back away. And I finally see it's his way of isolating me again. Yep. I'm right. back. I'm do this. Let's work on this. But and then for me, I kind of question what type of friends are they because why are, okay yes we're having issues but why do i have to back away like why is it okay you know yes. has anybody checked on you to make sure you're okay you know once once he's telling you that we are having these issues are you guys just done with the relationship or are you coming back and checking on me periodically to make sure everything is okay exactly and they don't it's kind of like uh we hate to hear that, but we don't want to get involved. It's a lot of that. And I don't under, like, I try to wrap my head around that and I just can't understand it. And I know, I mean, I understand that a lot of people, you know, they're trying to protect themselves and they're trying to protect their family. And I get that because we don't know honestly what the next person is thinking. And I get that. But at the same time, somebody has to step up and somebody has to, you know, be the voice for the voiceless somebody has to so if i mean i understand we don't want to get involved but if i have to sneak and do it you know sneak and do it you don't have to say my name you don't have to tell everything about me you just hey what is going on what i need to do you know who do i need to tell because somebody knows somebody that knows somebody in the right in the, in the police department judge lawyer all that somebody knows somebody that can help you guide you to get get you to be and feel safe exactly and so um you know it it's kind of like not long ago we got into it and he started trying to take my things so i had to call the police to the house and never did i would think that a, a police officer was side with him which is crazy, which and is crazy. I, mm -hmm. oh, okay, so he took uh, my laptop and he put it in his truck and I said, I just want my laptop back. I mean, he's going crazy, he's taking my things and everything. And all the cops said, well, um, he has a right to, if you want to just break the windshield. And I'm like, okay, now if I honestly broke that windshield, you'd be arresting me. Exactly, mm -hmm. like that so, don't make that make sense. Mm -hmm. So, that he was sitting there telling the police officer, you know, I work so hard for her and I give her this house and she goes dancing and does all these things when I'm not home. And the cop was like, oh, I get it. I get, I understand. Because the cop is abuser himself. And I'm like, where in the world does this make this right? Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It, it it doesn't. I mean, we, you know, I have a nonprofit here in Texas as well. Um, and having it's hard. It it 
it really is hard trying to have the right people in your corner is really man it's it's stressful and it's hard because we know that it's people out here that need the help but trying to get them to help you is where you know the miscommunication is which well, is is so aggravating well it's it's honest like so when he punched me at the the dance hall and the cop came and arrested him when we went to court the prosecutor wanted to slam him they're like this is his first time but i guess they saw his past record and they're like yeah this isn't gonna go well for him and then they brought the cop in who did arrest him and the cop was like he was angry he goes he was angry the whole time i took him there he wanted to hurt you mm -hmm. and so hearing that and then watching him in the hearing only talk about he didn't want to get probation and i'm like uh you did wrong <laughs> right <laughs> uh, and you're all you're worried about is if they're going to give you the kind of pro probation you have to go to see every week mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so once he found out it was just a 180 day probation like you can't do anything for 180 days he was so relieved and then upset that they off they told him he had to go to anger management but did he complete the anger management oh yes and i'm like i think the court hearing should have made him go more than just an eight-hour session mm -hmm. you don't get any from an eight-hour session you don't and i know once a week anyway that, mm -hmm. um and then from the police here they do make him leave, but then when that one came and said, you know, I understand and tell me that I can just break the car window. I'm like, are, are you serious? Mm -hmm. So it's hard. It's hard for, I think it's hard for women and even men who yes. are assaulted to get anybody to listen to them unless there is an yes. act, physical altercation. Right. And that's why I think a lot of it comes in there too. You know, I find in some states with domestic violence, they take it very lightly or they think it's, oh, if it's not a physical hit, it's not domestic violence. And mm -hmm. then in some states, you know, here in New Orleans, they, <laughs> they jack you up quick. You know, um, the, they take the man all the time and sometimes the woman will be the aggressor. But they take the man all the time. So I feel like everybody needs to be on one accord. Everybody from the judge to the police need to know that domestic violence is just not physical. Domestic violence is mentally, emotionally, financial, um, all kind of things. It's not just hitting because sometimes the hitting don't store. So later, it be more of the mental abuse that women go through, you know, abuse, period. So I feel like everybody needs to be educated. And I think that's where the problem coming in at, that everybody not educated, that it's just more than just hitting to domestic violence. It's, it's a lot of these things. And what happens in turn, because everybody's not educated, the mm -hmm. victim kind of falls short mm -hmm. on getting the judgment or the help that they need. And I think that's a that's a lot of that too with the with the in law enforcement and judge and all is no education to it. Right. So well, it, 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 uh -huh. Go ahead. I think, you know, with him, he he needed somebody to be on his side. So he said, poor pitiful me to the police officer. And for the police officer to sit there and go, Oh, I understand completely. You know, I just went through a divorce and I'm like, oh great. So we got somebody who's been He's, he's putting his own emotions yeah, yeah, and he's the better, yeah. and he's not yeah. supposed to and see and that's the thing that's where it's so hard you know for us because when we are trying to protect a victim but we have all these barriers that we have to go through because you can have this one asshole over here and of course it goes off of whatever he puts in the report even yeah. though it could be inaccurate to what to to an extent but they go off of what he says. And then if he needs to elaborate, 
fabricate, then they're listening to him because he's he's held at a higher standard, which yep. is BS. You know, what about how I feel? But then they turn it around to, well, you went back, but you don't know what Why my dad went is. Back? You, don't, you don't know what my story is, but then you won't give me the opportunity to explain my story to mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. But then you want to take that and then you want to twist it. And then it's something completely different. Then you turn it around and then I'm the bad guy. And then now you have me questioning myself like, what? Is it me? And it's not, and it's not you. It's it's not you at all. So Vicky, doing this in y'all marriage, um, doing the marriage, have you always when you do go back, do you have the doubt that you are making the wrong decision or you just thinking to yourself, Well, it's just me? I think it's just me. If I'm a better person, things would be better. But you know you are a good person, right? right. You know that, right? And okay. I think that's what everybody experienced when they go back, you thinking it was just me, or maybe I'm in my feelings at the time, or maybe I can do better. But when I do better, nothing come back. Exactly. And so I always feel like I need to be a better wife. If mm -hmm. I'm just a better wife, then he wouldn't get so angry. And then if I just conform to the way he thinks I should be, and I, what I really truly believe is, when I moved here and I had no friends, I truly depended on him only. Mm -hmm. well, I don't. Right. And, that, and that's what he and, lacked in. So now he's lashed out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so when my friends, especially my male friends call me and they're like, hey, you know, Alan called us and he he's wanting us to back away from you. And I'm like, please don't leave me. <laughs> I'll be alone again. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's what he wants. He wants you to be isolated. He don't want you to have nobody. It's that soul. He's looking for that soul dependent. Like he yeah. just wants you to depend solely on him. Because he already said that I'm 55 years old and I don't want to be alone. Exactly. Well, maybe if you change your attitude, asshole, you wouldn't be alone. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hey, let's right. just call it what it is. Right. Don't make it have you ever thought like when you know when did the time and I know y'all still together, when did it come across your mind that it's time for me to leave? It's time for me to execute my plan. Um honestly, I think the second time that he knocked me down, and then it it really kicked in after uh he he punched me twice is really when I'm like, it's time for me to, it's mm -hmm. time. For me. And putting that plan into effect mm -hmm. to leave. Mm -hmm. So with him, every time I say something about like, you know, about his anger, he goes, well, then you shouldn't say things to cause me anger. I wouldn't lash out if you didn't say those things. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? Do you know with his other four wives, because you're the fifth right? Wife, um, right. Okay. Do you know if he has done them that way? Um, I think he had, with his other wives, he was never really married that long. Oh. And that's okay. probably why. Um one one to two years is like at the the most mm -hmm. because he had children with them mm -hmm. so me coming into his life and fixing a lot of things for him and giving him a better life mm -hmm. he's just wanting control of me. I don't really think I'm, honestly, I think he looks at me like property. Mm -hmm. And then you say you younger than him, right? Yes. And that's, and that probably, and that's probably another thing too. His otherwise, maybe they may be older than him or they may be the same age with him. And he, he didn't feel the control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was about their age. Right. And that's, and that tend to, when they feel like you're younger than them, and they feel like they have the control because older people think that younger people can't think. 
Exactly. And that's even where, you know, that's even with anything that older people feel like us younger people, we 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 can't think for ourselves. We need somebody to think for us. But that's not true all the time. Exactly. It's a sense of control for him. That's all that is. It's not like he worrying about being by himself. It's a sense of control. Like, you know, at the end of the day, you can do it. You know, at the end of the day, no matter how this cut go, you know, like, even if you could um, just execute the goal and mm -hmm. you could do a, 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 a divorce anywhere, probably. Mm -hmm. you can. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's yeah. not like you have to be in the same state. No. So the divorce probably will be faster, even since he have a domestic violence um yeah. case open against yes. him. So that probably be, and that's probably something that he know too. That if she get a divorce, it it'll be faster. So he can't weasel his way out of it. Mm -hmm. Well, you mm -hmm. know, and that's what I've kind of looked into how um, Texas does their their divorce, and being that he does have a a case against him with me how quickly can i get that done and you know and out of everything it's kind of ironic like i don't want to hurt him still right I just, I just agree. yeah and you know what that's okay for you to have those feelings because yes. you're gonna have them right now because you're going through the transition and it's just like it's gonna seem like well i should stay i should go I don't want feel, I don't want to feel that, but that's your feeling. Mm -hmm. yes. And at the end of the day, no matter what nobody say, you have to be the one to make that decision. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm there. I'm like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Right. From the time like um, being back in June, I had my friend from Tennessee come down here. And he got, again, if he gets any kind of alcohol in him, it just, like, I can see his hate to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know I, how to explain that. Like, he looks at me with such hate. Mm -hmm. So I was standing outside with her, and he comes rolling up in his truck like he's going to hit me. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? Mm-hmm. So, and then her watching him and him sitting there calling me names and how he wants to hit me and stuff. And when he called me the C word, you know, my friend was like, hey, you don't talk to her that way. Mm -hmm. Right. And then he started firing into her and telling her to get out of the house and everything. And she was like, no, 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 no. This is half her house and I am her guest. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And are you still friends with her? Oh, yes. Okay, good. Oh, yes. She's like, it's time for you to leave. Mm -hmm. It's time yes, for you. It is. It, it, you need those kind of people. Have you talked to, do, do Texas have like a legal aid um, lawyer department? Because I know we have legal assistance here in New Orleans, in Louisiana. Well, in New Orleans. Do they have like a legal aid department where you can go to maybe talk to a legal aid since you don't have the money? For a lawyer? Yes, we do have those here. The problem, everything is a problem. The problem is they're so <laughs> backlog, it's ridiculous. Well, yeah, that that that's the problem. I mean, if you can walk into the courthouse and be able to talk to somebody, it'll be a miracle. Oh, you I know. know. They, they, they'll get back to you. That will somebody will call you? You sitting around, girl, we ain't got time for all that. You don't. So like, wait, what y'all legal department, the legal aid department is in the, in the courthouse? Some of them are, yes, depending oh, on because, the because No, what I was thinking about, we have like a whole um building like at 1010 comma. That's where all your legal aids are. Like if you need a legal aid for divorce, you need a legal aid for a rental, you need a legal aid, like they they all in this um one building. Build, yeah. yeah, they call them um pro bono lawyers too. They're another, you know, source too, but they all they're not in a courthouse. They in like the 1010 comma building where everybody's their legal, like legal aid. They have legal aid, the pro bono, which pro bono and legal aid is about the same. same then you yeah. have some paid lawyers too. 
but the paid lawyers kind of work with the pro bono and the legal aid lawyers to help you, but they're not in a courthouse. I don't think we have that, I don't, but I, I will look into it. But I've never, I've never heard of we having our own building. But that again, I haven't been here that long, so I mean, I've only been here in Texas for four years. I think um, that's and, what you should look up, like a pro pro yeah. bono lawyers. Um, they call pro bono lawyers. They call legal aid lawyers because some legal aid lawyers and pro bono they kind of work together because they want. I know legal aid lawyer, and that's I'm just I'm speaking for New Orleans. I'm not sure, but pro bono and legal legal aid and pro bono lawyers kind of go off your income. So if you have like a zero income, you get the help. But if you have like this so much, you have to meet the criteria, and. But if you go to a paid lawyer and you don't have the money, they kind of refer you to the legal aid lawyer. But league, we have a whole, like a whole, we have legal aids for if you need rental assistance, you going through a divorce, you need divorce. Like they have a, a legal aid for everybody, for all those different areas that you need. So you might want to look and see if they have like either legal aid or pro bono. Those are the two that will help you because you don't really need no money to you know, get them on your case. So that might be a good way too to find out. Yeah, yeah. that does sound yeah. great. Right. I Look think like I think um matter of fact. Don't I pull out the I'm gonna pull out my phone. Pull out your but, phone. Yeah, we I know we have, I know we have legal aid in you know different courthouses. I know we have that. You know, you might be able to go to a lawyer's office and talk to them. But the problem with that is, you know, you can't just walk in and then asking to get a consult. Sometimes they'll give you a consult free, and then some of them want to charge you. And I'm just like, what? You know, I've. I've been trying to put together like people that I can go to and say, hey, this is the situation. This is what I have going on. But it's like for me, dealing with domestic violence is so, even though they know it's there, it's still a hush hush type of matter. Yes. And even from the police, the lawyers, the judges, nobody really want to touch it, you know, because everybody looks at it. Cause I didn't been to court with a couple of people. They just look at it. Well, you grown. Yeah. You know, I've had somebody sit up there and say, you're grown. It was a choice for you to go back. So why what did the, you choose to go back? Huh? Of course. I wouldn't say that on here. Just put in DFW. Just put in Dallas. So um yeah I'm a look I'm looking now like okay. um, it should be like something Yeah it should be something but you know um I'm trying to think of that lady's name off the top of my head um I will have to send a couple of emails to a couple of people maybe a text message to a couple of people to see um who they use um because i'm newer into it a lot of people don't want to and it's and that's what i don't understand if we are all on the same platform if our mission is to help people dealing with domestic violence is not i'm taking money from you and you're taking money from me at the end of the day you know our mission is to come together and help the yeah. people that need to be helped not well well what are you trying to do look man I, i'm just trying to get her the help that she needs period in the story see my what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to get my own building i but when it comes to that the hard part for me is because i don't want to take a lot of grants because a lot of grants dictate mm -hmm. what you can and can't do i don't want that you i don't want you to tell me that i can only i can only have this amount of women and i can only have this amount of men and i can only they can only stay for this i don't want that i don't want you to dictate and tell me what i can and can't do and that's where my struggle is um so uh, i'm i'm out here i'm trying it and it and it's hard you know it, it really is hard you know people listen to you and they understand but then they really don't understand until it affects them
And exactly. then when it affects them, then they're like, okay, well, I kind of see what you're talking about. Or I know somebody that kind of went through that, you know, and I've always kind of, then this is where the prejudice comes in. I've always looked at them, try to figure out why, like why he wasn't that, or she wasn't that. I'm just trying to know what, what was it about them that they made them stay? Why are we judging? At the end of the day, I'm coming to you because I need help. So can you help me or not? Leave all, the, all that in between out. Um, like, since he's gone two weeks and he's home a week, they're like, do what you need to do two weeks while he's gone and then be the good little girl when he's home. And I'm like, I can't. Fake it. Who won't fake that? Who want right. to fake that? That's because you know, like because it. you you could be in your mind, you could be doing everything that you know that he likes, but it still doesn't matter because it's not enough. No, it's, it it's, it's not enough. enough. It's not going to be enough, no matter what you say, what you do. Exactly, it's going to be enough. It's like you know, at the end of the day, the only thing, only thing you have to do is get out. You have to get out, and you have to, you know, know that you can do it. And that's the thing you have to know that you can do it. You, you, you um you see that in the chat? Yes. Okay. That's 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 um write that number down too. Okay. That's um pro bono. And you know, it's like I said, it's I'm at the point now where I have isolated myself again. Mm -hmm. Because again, you are judged by mm -hmm. the, and so I'm just, I think I might have like a three or four friends that I actually talk to who have actually seen him in action. Mm -hmm. And then the people that think that he's the victim because he plays it so well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, maybe I am the bad person. Yeah, because they want you to think that. <clears throat> That's the thing. They want you to think that. And But it's good that you know otherwise. And it's good that you still, you know, have people you can talk to. And now you have two more people that you can talk to. So, you know, we are here. Um, we, we have a group on Facebook, you know, give a sister a hug. We have um, the YouTube because the the... The main thing is to spread awareness. That's what we want to do. We want to get help for people. We want to bring awareness. So that's why I posted um, that I'm, I'm looking for people to who are willing to share their story. Because um, there's no judgment over here because we've all been through it. Um, we know what it entails. We know that you know the police officers are not our friends. We know that some of these lawyers are not our friends and the judges are not our friends. So, you know, that's why, you know, we have to stick together and help each other. And that's the whole point of what, this is why we call this a sisterhood. Because it, I mean, I've never, I mean, outside of this, I've never met Erica personally, like face to face. She lives in Louisiana. I now live in Texas. Like, I don't, we can't tell you where we just started having a conversation. I know I did one of her shows. We've been talking ever since. Now we come together. Now we have different things collectively together. And then she has her own separate things just as well as I have my own separate things. But, you know, that's the whole part of this whole cohesiveness. We want to let, you know, people know, women know that it's possible. We can come together. We can help each other. You know, it. It at the end of the day, it takes women to, to, to rule the world anyway. I mean, men are just here. And I don't, <laughs> don't get me started on that. But, you know, we, women, you know, we're the ones who do it all. So it's like we have to come together and we have to stick together instead of, you know, trying to talk about me. Uh -uh. Over here, we don't do that. We, we are here to love on you. We are here to support you. That's what we're here for. So, you know, you're able to message me, message her. You can join, you know, the group on Facebook, you know, give a sister a hug. And we, if you, anytime you need to talk, whatever, whatever, girl, we here. That, that's, what the, that's what this is. In the chat um, is a couple of numbers that um, you can probably call, especially that last one. Okay. 
you can see the chat? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, those are a couple of ones that I found um, that, you know, you can call. Those are all pro bono, um, pro bonos and legal aids. Okay. That you can call that last one that I put up. That's the one you might want to reach first because that's dealing with domestic violence and family. So, okay. Yeah. So we're we should wrap it up so then we could pull this so she can so we everybody ain't got to see it so she could just see what's so in, it's the in the chat anyway. Okay. So, um, before so we close, you made me lost my train of thought because I'm I don't know what. Um, <laughs> so before you leave, before we leave, is there anything that you would like to share with us, with other ladies that sat that maybe sat now listening to your story? What do you have to share with them? I just don't want women to feel like abuse is only physical. Mm-hmm. You are. Right mentally abused, you are verbally abused, and you are financially abused. Yes. And when it comes to you are not alone. Um, they're, you know, I just want women to feel like just because he's verbally abusive does not mean you're not abused. You are abused. They should not talk to you that way. They should not control you with money. Mm-hmm. Um, and they should never isolate you from your family or your friends. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they shouldn't because all that is just giving them more control. So with that being said, ladies, um, Mickey told her story. I hope by any chance that her telling her story may impact you. We all have our time of when we're going to leave. Everybody's not going to leave at the same time. Everybody's not going to do everything at the same time because they're giving your situation sometimes they're is- the abuser isolate you so it's up to you to sit down and always you know no matter what you're feeling at the moment always let's start a game plan it's always a great time to put a plan together that's going to be safe for you and if you have any kids that's going to be safe for you and your kids and always find someone that you can trust that you know no matter what he do or what he said to them that they're going to hold your secret in your plan because it's always a great time for a safety plan because things can get worse and we want everybody to get out the situation and nobody get hurt but sometimes it happens so always think of that safety plan you know make that safety plan Find that one person that you can rely with, rely on and trust with your safety plan and that's going to help you execute that safety plan to get to somewhere safe. So I want to thank everyone from joining Wind Down Fridays with Give Us a Star Hug, Survivor Edition. And mm-hmm. I want to thank Mickey from even just stepping up to say, I'm going to tell my story to help the next person because we just never know how that story, her story is going to change somebody in life or even help somebody to get to the next level so i just want to say thank you mickey from coming on and allowing us to share your story here at give a sister a hug because we all here as women's white black creole white black green purple yellow we all are sisters at the end of the day because at the end of the day when you cut our skin we all bleeding blood red blood yep. right. so, <laughs> so we all have to come together and yeah. help each other and guide each other on this journey because this journey is not easy. It is mm-hmm. hard, and especially when people not educated on mm-hmm. domestic violence. Domestic violence is not just physical. Domestic violence is mentally, emotionally, controlling, financial, and everything in that above. Everything that's not healthy. If he ain't telling you, babe, I love you and bringing you flowers, hell, that ain't healthy either. <laughs> Cause them down flowers me um be I done did something but I'm gonna bring you these flowers. <laughs> <laughs> so you know if it if it don't feel right and it don't look right, go with your first emotion. It ain't right. 
Dang right. So, yep. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Um, I ha- you. I'm yep. your girl, Arthur Erica. I have my fabulous co-host with me, Arthur Kim. And y'all guys have a great day. Yes. Peace. Thanks.